And now, continuing our look at the various O snaps, we have apparent intersection. Apparent intersection is really cool, and I like this one a lot. It will snap to what would be an intersection point if the two objects continued on and actually intersected each other. So if I click OK and I draw a line here, this line and this line do not intersect because this one stops. But if it did, it would continue on and intersect somewhere around here. So I can draw another line from anywhere and let's say I want to intersect it. I just kind of hover over this line and hover over this line. And now you can see it extends it, finds the intersection, and clicks on there. So that can be very useful. Otherwise, I would have to extend this line, draw my line, and then trim it back to wherever I was before. And since I didn't mark where I was before, I don't really know where I was before. So you have several steps that you have to take to be able to find that intersection that, well, I no longer have to take with that running O snap turned on. Now, it can be very tricky to get it to show up. But let me show you again. Start a line. Now, I've got to kind of pick the line, pick it and hold it. I mean, not selecting with my mouse, just hovering over it so that the O snap glyph comes up. Then go to my next object. You know, I, I kind of got to grab them both. And now I can get to it. It works best if you pick your first point first, and then you pick the line that can be extended or that would be extended with it in the case here. And there you go. And if you can't get the hang of it, you can't seem to get it to work. It is tricky. It is difficult. And I've been doing this for a long time, so I've had a lot of practice at it. Now, so don't worry if you don't get it. If you don't, just draw some construction lines in there and have at it. Now, parallel, I usually keep off because it can make things difficult to draw sometimes. So if I start a line, you can see the glyph as I'm trying to pick on here, it does a lot of things to me like the nearest did. It keeps wanting to make something parallel. And a lot of times, it's hard to get it to work correctly. So that's why I typically keep it turned off. If I want a parallel line, I'll use the offset command. See, that's easy, and I know that it's parallel. It's much easier to use the parallels O snap by typing it in, by locking that in. The running O snaps aren't locked in. If you come to a more appropriate O snap, it will automatically switch to that. So if I turn on the parallel running O snap and then I'm trying to draw that, sometimes it will give me an endpoint or a midpoint, etc. But if I type it in P A R, then I pick my object I want to parallel, I'm locked in here to the parallel line. See, I can't draw anything else really. It gives me that error. It said, hey, look, dude, you need another point here. And boom, that green line comes in. And wherever I click now, that line is parallel. So that's why I keep the running O snaps all on except for nearest and parallel because they're a bit tricky to use that way. So that's what they all do. You can use whichever ones you want because you can always get to your O snaps by just typing them in. Or if you're starting a command and you have your right click shortcuts turned on, hold down the shift key and then right click. And here are all of your O snaps right here. You can get all of them and a few extras. You can also get to your O snap settings this way. So if you're working and you find out that you don't have your proper running O snaps on, Instead of exiting out of the command and starting over, just shift, right click, O snap settings. And there you go. Now I want to go back to some of these settings here. I want to talk about what's called object snap tracking. I like object snap tracking. With this, 
the cursor can track along alignment paths you know of different objects you know based off of other object snap points and then when specific points are set up then you can use them right in the command a lot like that apparent intersection that you saw so this is cool you can press f11 to turn those off or on or you can come down here to the status bar and click right here you go to your O snap settings, you can also toggle that on or off right here. Object snap tracking. Click OK. Now watch what I can do. Let's say I want to draw a line that is on this line if the line extended out to this endpoint. So what I do is I find the endpoint here and I can track down. As you can see right here, it's not intersecting anything, but that green little glyph needs to be present. You can see it right there. And now I come and do the same thing here. Hover over it, wait, take a breath, count to one. And now this will track. And as I get to that intersection point right there, I can click. So you can do a lot of cool stuff without having to create construction lines. See, I could draw a construction line, make it perpendicular, move this line so that I know it's right at the end, draw another line here, it's perpendicular, that's my point right there. Draw a line, and draw to that end point, and now go back, and erase those two objects. That's a lot of extra work, whereas all I have to do Start here with my tracking on, find my endpoint, extend out, find this endpoint, and extend back. There's my intersection, boom, I'm done. And again, it can be tricky to use. You have to follow something exactly, you have to follow the path. You can't really be shaky as you go about. You can see that things are going to move and it's going to pick up other trackable points. But I can do that with any snap point. Here's a perpendicular line. I can move it and see it's tracking up or even perpendicular or this intersection point. I can do a lot of different things and just the slightest bit of movement can take it off of that pathway. So you have to be careful. And the trick is to find a snap, wait a second, let it get a hold of it, make sure that little green plus sign is there, find another snap point, as you can see I'm already extending it because it's finding out something real close, and then boom, I just drew a line to that intersection point. So these things can really help you out, they can be a bit tricky to use, but they can be very useful because they can save you some time and having to create construction lines to do your drafting work and then erasing those construction lines. Now there's another tracking feature that I want to show you and that's called polar tracking. This feature allows you to snap to specific angles when you're drawing. Just press F10 to toggle the polar tracking off or on or come down here to the status bar. Click the button. Now if you type in OS that will get you to your drafting settings again. And you can go to the polar tracking option right here. You can turn it off, turn it on. You can add angles or set up to specific increments of angles. So if I want to snap to every 90 degrees, I can. That's kind of cool because then you can draw orthogonally without turning your ortho command off and on. It's up to you. You can do every 45, every 30, 22 and a half, etc. Let's pick 15. Click OK. So now when I draw a line, every 15 degrees, I'm going to get that green line. And I'm going to be able to track across that green line. So here's 0, 15, 30, 45, etc. So I can draw lines here real quickly 0, 60, 135, 165, 75, you get the idea. So that's kind of cool. 
So if you're trying to draw an isometric view or like a PNID drawing, you can use the polar tracking to draw at those angles very quickly without having to type in that information. This is a time saving tool. And if the angle that you want to use is not in here, just click on the new and let's say it's an angle, even a weird angle of 3.14. Press enter and now that's added into it. So what's cool here is that I'm going to draw a line at 3.14 degrees, every 3.14 degrees, and still at every 15 degrees, because I have that turned on. So you can delete it or add to it, or if I want to go every 45 degrees, let's turn on additional, let's say, 20 degrees. Click OK. So I'll be able to draw a line at 20 degrees, at 45 degrees, etc. So when you're drawing and you want to draw accurately, you can use your O snaps. You can always have your running O snaps on and they're quickly toggled off. You can use your object snap tracking to help you get or to help you access those snaps even more so and to eliminate construction lines. And you can also use your polar tracking to help you draw at specific angles but not be locked into those angles. All of these tools, once mastered, will help you to draw more accurately with less steps. And that's ultimately our goal.